What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and today we're going to be talking about Fault, a new Paragon project that has been kept under wraps until now by Strange Matter Studios. I just learned about this project a day or so ago when they reached out to me via Discord. I asked if they would be willing to do an interview, and not only did they do it, they also set the game up so that I could play around a bit while they answered the questions. This was completely unexpected, so if my gameplay and interview abilities seem off, that's why. There are a few sections that seem laggy, but that's because I kept accidentally tapping out of the game. The gameplay itself is very smooth. If you have any more questions about this project, feel free to join their Discord. Be sure to visit their website to sign up for the alpha and possibly get in as an early playtester. Playtests are actually going on now. All of that will be linked in the video description below. I'll be interviewing their game designer, OmniNot, while Silver Monk tries to shred my face with Long Dong Doc. Oh, Loading wait. in, I'm excited. All right, so the first thing we're presented with here is to choose your aspects. So what's up with these aspects here? Yeah, so uh, the aspects are like a redesign of kind of the affinities from Paragon. Uh, we like the idea of, you know, making choices before the game starts. And, uh, and in successful games like League of Legends, they are usually these passives that will impact the play style that you're going to adopt during the game. So these aspects are basically passives that you receive all game. You get to pick two of them from any color uh, or the same color. And the, those should be decisions you make, strategic decisions about your intended, you know, style of play for that game. And so, you know, reading through them, you can see that a lot of them are, you know, are geared toward mages, support players, you know, tanks. And, uh, and we hope that, you know, these, you find these like, uh, you know, impactful. And, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and the colors are what we're calling factions. And uh, the, the aspects you choose, depending on what colors they are, will affect kind of uh, how, how you scale somewhat in the late game. And I think we'll probably talk about that later on here. So feel free to pick, you know, any two aspects you want. Check out the descriptions if you feel. But... Currently, <laughs> the game has already started. The timer is actually ticking. Uh, we plan to move this to the oh. <laughs> lobby, to the draft lobby, you know, at some point. So you're not wasting, you know, game time trying to figure out what cards or what aspects you're going to choose. Okay. Oh, jump pads. Is it, oh, it works. Yeah, it man, works. The away. jump pad works. Go back for more. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so. You guys have 11 heroes, right, that, you, that are going to be in the internal testing in the closed alpha, right? That's right. So what made you decide on the heroes that you did pick? What was the design philosophy there? Well, since they're the first heroes, we wanted, like, a variety of features to include, An you know, stuns, shields, heals, uh, you know, slows, uh, ranged and melee, obviously, uh, you know, and to try to get a good variety of you know roles as well obviously you know we're not gonna make 11 carries and you know ask people to give us feedback <laughs> right so uh very much so we were uh uh yeah trying to get uh, a spice a spicy you know variety so um okay how can i turn is there a way to turn in-game sounds down you can turn down your primary volume hit just hit escape and go to audio and there's a primary volume setting. Okay. You can you can turn that down. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you need to tune that, feel free. Yeah, I do need I do want to be able to hear you and have everybody else hear you. Yes. Um Yeah, it's a little better. I like the uh, I like the sounds for Twin Blast though. I do like the um Thanks. So, I mean, we're 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 in lane. Everything's functioning well. I was able to last hit a minion earlier. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get more. Yeah, not, not really trying so much right now, to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, <laughs> want to make sure everything works here. Yeah. I like the look of the towers. So the, the design philosophy of the map, is it to be more... Okay, yeah. Shots are smooth. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the design philosophy of the map, is it to be more, I don't know, um, legacy or monolith oriented? Yeah. So it's very much like a fusion. Um, so like we liked the action in Monolith. Uh, we really liked that, you know, people weren't necessarily sitting idle. Like 
because you know travel times were lower than legacy and because um and because uh the well, the map is smaller and the design of the map like there was more action more space to fight legacy jungles were a little cramped for our taste so we wanted a sort of monolith style map but also scaled up a little bit because monolith was uh, too small at least in our humble opinions so the map is significantly bigger than monolith you can tell just by going into like the small side jungle on the left it's so much bigger than monolith and i think that'll be clear to players so aesthetically uh it's definitely monolith but gameplay wise uh we hope that you know it's uh Mm. I guess it's still somewhat monolithic, like action-packed, but a little bigger. Yeah. So, and more options to travel, that's really another thing. Like, Legacy had a great, uh, you know, I, I like the pathing, like, you had a lot of options of how you were going to get to where you wanted to go through the jungles. Uh, so we also incorporated that, so it's not as simple of pathing as, uh, Legacy had. Or as Monolith had, pardon me. Okay, so his Twin Blast is the old double shot for his right click, I like that. Yeah, yeah. It applies, uh, you know, on a hitfix twice, so... Scales well with those, uh, items. <laughs> Just get halted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still alive, unfortunately. Got him. <clears throat> For people who are watching, I'm not really trying to, uh, win the game here. I'm just, uh, testing things out. Uh, let's... I'm going to take a trip through the jungle here. Actually, let me back. Is this back working? Yes. It does. Look at that. We even got a back animation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now that I got a yeah. little bit of money, let's see if we can actually pick up some stuff from the shop. You said pick. You hit I, right? Yes. I opens the shop. Nice. You probably want the uh, item with the sword icon. Not the sword and shield, but the, the sword. Item with the sword icon. Looking through here. Yeah. The academy pistol shortened to a pistol. Uh, on that top row, beneath the consumables. Beneath the consumables? Yep. So a shield, alpha one, a pistol. Gotcha. There you go. I would like yeah, a pistol, please. Yeah. You can double click it, or you can click it and click buy. And this shows um, everything that I can go into. And I did pick red as one of my aspects, so that will help, right? Um, that will empower these later in the game, right? Yeah. Um, so if you were to build that pistol into one of the red legendary items, then that red legendary item is going to give you a rank in that red faction. You can see the ranks at the top of the store. Uh, and the number of ranks in that faction will determine the amount of bonuses you get on your red legendary items. And so if you click on one of the red legendary items, you can see which stat is being improved uh, for a rank in these factions. I think maybe right now I might say tokens, but uh, we've been renaming things. <laughs> As some people have noticed from the, uh, the the card and item descriptions having some funny names in there. Coming through the jungle here. It looks very nice. A lot of grass. You got the five stack jungle camps. Did, that, did those stack throughout the game like they did in Paragon? Or are they yep. just always five stacks? They start at two and then they go up from there. Oh, excellent. Allied tower destroyed. Uh, oh, so, he got our tower. That son of a bitch. So yeah, real quick, I don't know if my voice was working. Yeah, I got my crashed. <laughs> Something in the... I don't know if it was the store or what, but yeah, my PC legit. Ah, that's us. Nice. So I'm not in the game anymore, but... You just like, walk around looking at if you do. I'm not going to waste more time restarting. <clears throat> Which is good, I can focus on the questions too. I just can't comment on the things you're looking at. I'll follow you around. Unfortunate. I guess is what happens when we try to show off in a, uh, what should have been a simple interview. <laughs> right now, Silver Monk is coming after me. He's killing me. Oh, I just... Oh. Has been slain. All right, well that's that's over with now. I, I can I can breathe easy. Let's ask some questions. <laughs> nice. I was able to <laughs> out. Just add some spice to your video. That that was a little spicy. So, uh, company specific questions. When, when did you, when were you guys founded? Um, 
Do you have the name copyrighted? Do you have the name? Are you guys incorporated? Anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't even know. We had, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, we formed back in like January and immediately we got uh, a company, you know, I guess license. This isn't my side of things either. And, uh, we've been operating under that license for a long time. And we recently had it renamed to strange matter studios when we finally decided on a company name. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, incorporated in, uh, Montreal, Canada. We've got two of our team members, uh, are there in Montreal. Uh, and you know, the other team, the rest of the team does not live in Canada, but that's where our officially our studio is from. Okay. It's a good game development city too. So it's a good place to be based in, I think. Okay, so you got the machine gun ultimate for Twin Blast. Uh, how did you guys decide which which abilities to use, which abilities not to use? Yeah, so for the most part, uh, because uh, we wanted like a game that was easy to make, or not easy to make, but we wanted to make the game uh, like playable as soon as possible. For the most part, we're using exactly what people would expect. Uh, we didn't spend a lot of time, you know, redesigning kits you know to make them unique because uh our our goal was to first make the game and you know try to give some semblance of balance try to give right. some semblance of you know uh you know show that we can do some unique stuff here and there and there are some unique mechanics obviously um like murdoch being able to, to push people into his static trap and that stuns them instead of slows them like just little things like that just to show that like we want to push the genre a little bit too i think of uh <laughs> deviated from the question. No, that's fine. Uh, how do you decide the abilities, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we throw in a little spice there, and when it comes to some characters, you know, like Steel. Uh, he, he went through multiple kits, like, even in the days of Epic and Paragon, so, uh, you know, deciding which abilities is going to come down to what we think is the most competitive, what we think is the most, you know, uh, strategically, you know, inspirational, you know, kits uh, to make them something that people want to play. Uh, yeah, and for and for some things, we might even turn to the community and ask, you know, what they're interested in. Definitely, yeah. our internal testers and the the play testers are going to have a lot of say. In uh, if we can't make a decision as a team on the game development or the game design side of things, then yeah, we're not afraid to ask for people's opinions. So, I'm trying to pull up my questions here that I had prepared for you. Uh, how are you guys going to deal with like um I, I don't really don't notice any input lag are you guys using gas or is this something that you programmed in yourself so uh to answer the first question yeah we're using gas uh gas is like um i'd say a major feature of unreal engine uh it's just a framework on which you can build ability like systems uh, that's what it stands for gameplay ability system mm -hmm. And it itself actually doesn't address lag. You know, it, it's it's more just a feature of Unreal Engine. And right, uh, how we'd it be kind of, we'd be silly, right, you know, kind of destroy. not to use gas. It makes you know making abilities so easy, yeah. or not easy, but uh, it, it provides a framework for that. Uh, and yeah, and to, as far as lag goes, it's going to come down to the you know the tier of servers that we use. You know how powerful they are, as well as the optimization of our C plus plus code, or yeah, because, uh, you know, having lightweight code, you know, and optimized code, you know, instead of having, you know, if there's two minion waves colliding on a lane where no one is, maybe, you know, uh, don't uh, track every auto attack from those minions, you know. Uh, so little optimizations, optimizations like that can happen, you know, uh, in the future. But right now it comes down to just that our C++ is solid and that... Uh, our servers are running at what at least was working for us for three v threes. We might have to make uh, might get more powerful ones if five v fives are more challenging to the server. Right. I think I hit all that. <laughs> yeah, I think you did good. I think you did good. Awesome. Um, so, how do you guys plan to monetize though? Like, how do you plan to make this game sustainable for the future? Yeah. So, to make the game sustainable, it's going to take a lot of support from the community. And obviously, monetization is about to come in at some point. Uh, we've been working for free for 10 months. Uh, and, you know, some of us are even putting money in to, you know, get lawyers to make our, you know, company contracts and uh, to get the sounds. Like, we weren't able to find 
free sound designers, so we had to pay for these sounds. Uh, but we found them important enough that we invested our time Allow and our money <laughs> into making this game. And so we hope that, you know, with the support from the community, if they really take off with it, that they'll find it uh, reasonable to support us also financially uh, whenever we're comfortable asking for it. Obviously, we're day two of, uh, you know, reveal. And I don't want uh, people thinking that we're just like out here to make money. We're like, we're out here to make Paragon. And, uh, you know, at some point we're going to ask for money. But, you know, that's going to come once the community is, you know, confident and you know really supporting us well, that's good to uh, know so it's man. gonna come that's good to hear uh and yeah you know and it's gonna be your typical thing you're gonna have microtransactions and uh when we go the plan is for when we go early access that uh it will be a paid early access we want the game to be completely free to play on launch like full release not you know you know alpha beta stuff and early release but like on full release we do want the game to be free to play in the you know uh pattern of other great mobas and uh, and to hopefully be able to support that completely through uh, microtransactions. Um, and so I'm not sure if we want to keep this part, but the uh, there's been a little bit of drama in the community about us potentially accepting real money for epic assets. I don't know if that's worth uh, addressing here. <laughs> uh, but, what? <laughs> yeah. That's really. Yes, yeah, so like skins about? and stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So like, Epic made skins. Like, is it you know moral? I guess is the question for us to accept or to accept real money for you know these cosmetics that we didn't make. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, we'll yield to the community if the community really thinks that we shouldn't be charging these epic assets or for these, you know, epic cosmetics, then, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to shoot ourselves in the foot by saying, no, you have to pay. Like, yeah, I mean, we're not, like the I said, game we're has not to out sustain here itself. to get rich. We're not out here to get rich. So that, that'll that suck for us because I think people would love to support us in that way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll we'll yield. Um, but at the same time, we would make the argument that the, like, the skins are free to download. They're free to look at. If you want to launch the Unreal Engine Editor and load those skins in and just run around in a blank map, like, that's, that's, you can do that. That is free. But to be able to use those skins in a game you love, in a game that's fun, that, you know, I think that justifies that maybe we would be allowed to charge for them simply because, you know, we made the game that makes those skins have value at all. So, you know, this may not be other teams' philosophies, and maybe people don't agree with it, but we would make that argument. And if people disagree, then, uh, you know, we'll, well, that'll be a community topic, and we'll, we'll hash it out with them. Right on. I keep um, tabbing out of the game at the wrong time, and Silvermuck just jacks me up. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of alt, alt, alting out, let me get my questions back up here. Uh, did I ask how long you expect game time to last? Yeah, I did. Attack. So, uh, um, no. Did I not? Well, how long do you expect the uh, the match match times to last? So, the target time is like 40 minutes max, hopefully. Or not max, but we want games to end by 40 minutes. I, uh, you know, because of the monolith action-packed style, like, games that drag on for an hour plus are not what we want, and we wanted the action-packed, you know... Still expressive gameplay, and, and if you start really winning, slick. we think you more or less deserve to win. There's going to be a little bit of, you know, there's going to be opportunities to come back and be strategic, so uh, expect that. But we want the game to be relatively short. We want people to be able to play, you know, and be confident that they're going to be able to finish a, a game if they got to leave in an destroyed. hour and stuff like that. Right. You know, long games can be, uh, you know, uh, it can be a drudge, so uh, we want it to be a little shorter than, you know, some of these, you know, 70 minute old uh, Paragon games. Do you so that's the target to... right now, uh, because we haven't done 5v5s, like a lot of them, like we have no clue what it's actually going to end up being. It could be a disaster <laughs> right now. It could be two hour games. We don't know. So we're working on it and we're tuning that. So you may not see this, that, but that is the target for now. Do you plan to implement um, controller support at all? Oh yeah. Yeah, we're already working on it. Um, because uh, that's obviously a big deal. Even PC, some PC players play on controller. Um, so we're, we're nearly, like, 
like we're, we're testing it already. Um, we're having some, or we're, we're met with some difficulty, but we're getting there. And it's just hard to, you know, if you have five active items and a uh, consumable, plus all these abilities and you need to level them up, maybe you want to use an emote. Like, getting all these maps to controller is not uh, uh, a trivial task. So, we're, uh, we're working on it. And uh, we want that to be in, in closed alpha. It may not be the first weekend of alpha, Allied but we, we would destroyed. expect to hear in about a month ish. That should be operational. So, I think that was a lot of words to say we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> big, the, the, the golden question here, the big one um, console, what are your plans there? Yeah, so obviously, like the PS4 community, especially, and also Xbox is is incredibly vibrant and there's a lot of love coming from the ps4 community so like Allied and when we hear you destroyed. like we see you on like every single thing we post like when's this coming to console is this coming to ps4 like we we hear you guys and and we desperately like want to provide that to you guys you know as soon as possible um the scale of what it takes to get a game on the ps4 um is something that i think the other guys on the team are more uh familiar with than I am, but it's going to take some success, a considerable success on PC first. It's going to take considerable success from the community to stay enthusiastic and to, uh, and, and to, to show us that if we, you know, go out on a limb there and like start making that happen, that there's going to be, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, positively re received in the PS4 community. And, uh, you know, and that the, our, our efforts will not be in vain, you know, cause you know, if we do that and then only 100 people play the PS4 game, it's going to be very tricky. So, so we 100%, like, we, we love our PS4 players, or the, you know, our 2B PS4 players, and we, and Xbox, sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be a while, and I don't think we can even give projections on when or, you know, how. It's gonna, all going to depend on how well everything goes in the, in the next few months, you know, with the game and with the community. So do you currently have play, um, the, well, the capability to design new heroes and skins and stuff like that? Or do you plan to just pick that up as you go along? Yeah, uh, we obviously we have workflows to make heroes. Uh, we have, uh, or like, you know, to add heroes to the game. And the only thing Epic is providing to us are the models of the characters and the animations. So if we get a 3D modeler and a animator, then there's nothing stopping us from making custom characters. Uh, it's right just on. a matter of either finding community members or finding or hiring people if we have enough financial support uh, to, to do those things. And 100% we want to do that. Probably even before we release all of the Paragon heroes. <laughs> uh, just because Paragon, you know, not every Paragon hero had a desirable playstyle and kit, at least, to, you know, by our standards. Yeah. I'm not even going to ask who that is. <laughs> we'll let people guess down in the comments. <laughs> yes. Tell us who you don't want to see down in the comments. <laughs> uh, I guarantee it's going to start with a W and end with a G. <laughs> so, uh, do you have plans for to, to add voice lines in? Like, I, I know you guys really want to just focus on the gameplay for now, but just on down the road, do you guys the plan have any plans to add in your own voice lines for the Paragon Heroes? Um. So interestingly enough the voice lines and some sound effects for some characters are in the free available Paragon assets. So like little grunts and I think even some like taglines kind of things are actually in there. Um, we didn't add them because we don't particularly care for them, uh, but those exist. We could theoretically toss them in, you know, with a little bit of work, but, uh, well, you know, we have, you know, bigger fish to, fish to fry right now. Uh, and as far as adding them, custom ones, yeah, yeah, I mean, very reasonable to, to make some recordings, you know, stuff that we don't think is cringy or, you know, <laughs> like laughable. Yeah. And, uh, and throw those in. So, yeah, I think that would be cool. Definitely in, like, the final polished product, we're going to have, like, nice little, nice flair like that, for sure. Right on. Um, do you, you guys plan to use it as a storefront, like Epic Games or... Yeah, so like Epic Games is, you know, that's like the, the hot deal right now, right? Like, if you get on there, you know, your company gets to uh, retain more of its revenue, especially since we're exactly, using yeah. Unreal Engine. 
if we launch on Steam, we're going to have to pay royalties to Epic. Um, whereas if we're on the Epic store, they waive those royalty fees and you just pay the, the store fee. Or it might be the other way around. Maybe you get waived the store fee and pay the royalties. I don't know exactly how it works. But uh, yeah, they waive the gets, royalties. It gets considerably reduced. Yeah. Um, so that's ideal. So And especially having contacts at Epic, you know, not saying they, they nailed Paragon, but I think they'd have a lot of industry expertise that would that they could provide to us that uh, Steam doesn't. Uh, right. Well, I mean, they have their games. Um, but, you know, if you're making a Paragon-like game, having access and contacts uh, that, you know, worked on that project uh, would be very uh, helpful. So, yeah, Epic Games is, like, the target. And uh, but right now we're on Steam because it's easy to get on there. And, uh, uh, and everyone, you know, everyone's familiar with Steam. So, yeah. Right on. Do you have a, like a sort of a general idea of the system requirements that's, that are going to be required to use the game to run yeah, it? Yeah, we're we're using Paragon assets, uh, you know, at full, you know, on full blast here. So, you know, it's going to be roughly similar to what you would expect would have expected for Paragon. So, you're likely going to want a dedicated graphics card, hopefully something you know, not bottom tier, and. Uh, and we, we already have settings in the game to reduce the resolution. Trust me, if you put the game on low, it looks awful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it, it is tragic. You can, if you're still in the game, you can try it now. Um, uh, so, like, it, you know, we, we, we tried to make that a thing for anybody who shows up. So uh, that, is, that, <laughs> that exists. But obviously, we don't recommend using those settings. So, so it all depends. If you want to run at max settings at 60 FPS, you know, if I had to guess... Uh, at 1080p, probably going to need, you know, uh, a 2060, maybe, yeah. uh, a, a maybe I would assume a 1060 could cut it, um, but especially until we optimize stuff, and there's a lot of optimization, optimization we can do, you know, if we get the support we need to do it, <laughs> then for sure, uh, uh, I, 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 we're never going to get down to the level where you can play on an integrated graphics card, you know, on a basic, you know, PC, but we'll we'll get it optimized to get those juicy frames and uh, and can play on there. You know, I'm on a more budget rig. Sixty right now, and it seems to be running fine. That's awesome. Yeah, you can turn on the FPS tracker if you want. Uh, it might be in the menu. Just open, hit escape, open the menu. And I think there's a ping FPS. Oh, thing you can. Do. Yeah, what's your frame rate? Oh, I have to check. I'm in another battle with Funk here. <laughs> he got me. Yeah, nice. I keep um I have it the way I have it set up right now. If I click off the screen anywhere, mm -hmm. it locks me out and I can't move. Oh. <laughs> Excellent time to to reset my questions here. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, got my my questions back up. Let me go back into the shop here. No, I haven't unlocked any favors because I haven't been playing that well or even trying. <laughs> but uh. Yeah. I can see where I can go in and do that if I if I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, good, good. <clears throat> yeah, we're still trying to like something we didn't consider was like the naming conventions that we're using and making it very clear what the systems are called and stuff. Yeah. So if it helps anyone watching this video, like the whole idea of these colors and the feats and the favor, call it the faction system. So I think you know, I think that sounds best, and it is uh, a good description. Where you, know, you do feats, like you do these certain objectives on the map, and, and awards you favor. And that favor can be used to rank up factions. Uh, and the factions being those colors. We don't have names for them yet. Uh, so what does ranking that's, that's up do? Yeah, so ranking up uh, a faction, you know, obviously makes that little number go up, which is uh, the, you know, kind of the tier or the rank of every faction. So whenever you look at your legendary items of that same color to the faction you're interested in, or that you've ranked up, then all of the items of that color have some stat that scales with the amount, with the ranks you have. And uh, so they provide power. You know, if you have four red legendary items and you have eight ranks in red, in the red faction, then you're going to get you know, eight of these small bonuses on each one of those items. So it really adds up late game. Uh, this system is something that we have in here to 
to you know test the waters of that system with the community but we have actually like really big plans to make it uh more interesting i guess i could say you know not just give little stat bonuses but maybe you have to have so many ranks to unlock the passive maybe so many ranks makes the active more strong you know longer range like more damage uh, so stuff like that like we have plans it's on the trello to overhaul that system a little bit uh but we're not going to do that if the community doesn't like the game <laughs> so you know getting that support and love uh uh, is gonna you know help us make this game more uh more strategic more interesting you know and we want it to be competition ready so you know make it competitive and not not so min maxi because like even the current faction system it reminds me of the legacy card system and it was just like you know oh what gives me more damage attack speed or you know power or damage and you know you have to crunch the numbers and uh, i love spreadsheets i'm the game designer i love spreadsheets uh, i love numbers but you know players don't want to receive numbers they want you know they want some like badass abilities right exactly so you know cool stuff they want to you know they want to feel strong so so yeah we want to we want to make that system even more you know uh what would be the word just more uh interesting and uh more impactful uh, to the player you know fun wise like yeah so oh crap i just clicked out again are there ways to support the project um like right now, like like what's I keep doing it. What's the best way to support the project right now? Um, just to support the content creators that are making things. Uh, you know, continue to send us your love. Like just, uh, you know, that the the positive community. Like you know, get hype. Uh, and and yeah, and like tell your friends. You know, get on the Discord. You know, if you know a you know a two D artist, like you go on our Discord, look at our open positions tab. If you know someone that's a talented you know graphic artist or you know uh, or computer artist, then you know say hey, like have you ever considered working like doing some uh, work with the for a video game? You know, yeah. this, this game looks promising and they need someone, and your work would be out there for all these people to see. You know, so like you know helping us fill these positions that we need, um, and and then once of course once we are comfortable you know, saying, okay, like, we will take your money, like, we, we believe you guys really trust us for that, because we don't want to, you know, uh, abuse people's, you know, trust or impulsiveness to spend money on us, so we're going to wait, uh, we're not going to accept money for a while, and, you know, we want to make sure that uh, the community really trusts us before we do that, because none of the other projects, right, have started asking for money, An allied uh, tower a little is legitimate under projects. And, yeah, I will say one of them did. <laughs> <laughs> the legitimate projects, and, uh, and that's a good pattern to follow. Like, you know, we don't ask for money unless, like, we really have something special that the community loves. Right so, on, man. Yeah. So, so if you're ready to throw money at us, just hold, just keep it, hold on to it, put it in a jar. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, put it in your we, fault jar. We, you know, in the the catastrophic catastrophic event that we falter, you know, falter. <laughs> in the oh, next, you know, sorry, that was an accident. <laughs> In the next couple Don't months. bullshit me. That uh, wasn't an accident. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, you know, that you'll be happy you kept your money. Granted, obviously refunds are a thing, but, you know, like that, that's, we don't like, that's the can of worms that even we don't want to get into. So, you know, we're not, we're not going to ask for money until we know we've got the support that we need to, to, to really push this game all the way through. Right on, man. Um, before I let you go, is there anything you want to say to uh, to everybody out there that you just guys you guys just released this? There's a lot of people that are going to be super pumped to see it. Um, I'm incredibly thankful to you and your team for everything you've done because this is amazing right here. This is very smooth. It plays really well. It looks great. It sounds great. I'm I am <laughs> extremely impressed right now. So anything you anything you want to say to everybody out there? Yeah, thank you so much for those. Uh kind words um the only thing i'd say was say to the the people especially the people that would love to be playing and can't you know like just be patient with us you know uh, we want to get that alpha pushed out in a month and you're going to hear a lot of content creators maybe talking about balance honestly if content creators are worried about balance and not about gameplay and the heroes and how they play like that is a huge blessing like we know our balance is off we know that you know numbers haven't been tuned we, we haven't we've barely played 5v5 so we haven't been able to test those things. So if you hear people complaining about balance or, you know, numbers, like we haven't, like we obviously we've done our best, but 
you know, uh, like those are going to change and those are easy to change. So don't worry if people are saying like, oh, this game is doomed to fail because the, the game's uh, like, you know, it's not balanced. Destroyed. It's like we just came out, right? So, so be patient with us. Uh, give us the benefit of the doubt, you know, if, you know, something's funny in the, the HUD or something and just, uh, and, and, and stay excited. Yeah, we're, we we love you guys. It's been awesome the past few days. I've barely been able to sleep. I've been so excited. Um, you know, just laying down, just thinking about, you know, what am I going to do tomorrow? Like, what am I going to, uh, you know, how's the playtest going to go? Maybe a little bit of nervousness, but also, like, more excitement. And it's so hard to fall asleep at night because I'm so uh, enthused by everything. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, you're doing great things. We, um, I think I speak for the community when I say we all very, very much appreciate uh, what you've done here. So good job, great job on, <laughs> for, for for everybody involved. But uh, I Thank think that's so gonna much. that's gonna do it though. I think that's gonna do it for the interview. This is a lot of fun, a lot of fun getting jacked up by Silver Monk. Silver Monk, great, good playing, sniping me out of nowhere. <laughs> but yeah, that is gonna conclude this interview. I hope you guys come out and check this game out. Um, there's so many content creators. Um, Coming out with all sorts of content. Um, so, uh, Sylphen kind of got revived by this. He got a second wind. It's good to see Sylphen out there making content. So check out whoever you want. Flux, Sylphen, Brittick, um, Nabori. I, I don't know. All of them. Everybody's making content on this game right now. So get out there. Support everybody. Right, check it out. Destroy. Learn everything you can. Um, this one's for real. This is the real deal. I know I said my video last night. I was I was unsure and I wanted to, to ask first. But yeah, I'm... 100% certain now that this is the real deal, so give it a look, guys. But for now, this is the Mango signing off. You guys have a good one. Mango!